Hello, good evening, everyone. I hope everybody is okay tonight. Hello, Tatiana, welcome. Welcome, everybody. Hello, teacher. Good night. Hi, Mauricio. Good evening. Yeah. Okay, good evening. How was your day? Was it busy? Oh, fine. And you? Oh, great. I'm doing great right now. Yeah. Okay. It was a very good day today. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, people, we are going to start a class by doing a feedback. It's okay, Marianne. Okay, let's try to remember what were we talking yesterday? What vocabulary were we using yesterday? Do you remember? What was the topic? Yesterday? Yes, yesterday. The present simple, simple present. Simple present, yes, the simple present. And we were just uh, recalling one of the usages of the simple present. Remember that the simple present have different good uses. Evening. Hi, good evening, welcome, welcome. We are talking about yesterday's class. So let's try to remember what was the usage we were studying yesterday? Is that a question? Yes, for scheduled activities. Very good. The unit two, the, the whole topic or the uh, main topic is staff and schedule. So we are going about uh, we are going to talk about people and also activities responsibilities, roles, and also the time, time expressions. And also today we are going to start with the adverbs of frequency. We know some of them, right? So now we are going to use them. We want to talk about our typical day at work. So our typical day at work usually includes includes um, activities related to our job position, right? If we go to work or get a work and then we don't know the activities that they expect that I do for them, then it's going to be a chaos, right? I maybe I wouldn't know what to do when I go to work and we maybe wouldn't be getting any objective, right? So the scheduled activities and agendas and programs are very important to know who does what and when do they have to do it, right? The way they have to do it, the tools they can use, right? So now we are going to start with a new topic, but at the same time, we are going to continue using the simple press because it's important for us to talk about people, responsibilities, roles, activities, and time. Time, time expressions, adverbs of frequency, and adverbs of time too, okay? So let's go just to listen to someone talking about a typical day at work. So please pay attention 
and listen. I'm going to play it once and then I'm going to call the roll, right? Yesterday, I was thinking about the things I always do on weekdays, so let me tell you a little bit about my daily routine. I am the assistant's manager and my job is to supervise the secretaries. Almost every day, I wake up early in the morning. The alarm goes off at exactly 5.30 a.m. Sometimes, it is quite hard to get out of bed so early because I have an English course late at night and sometimes don't get much sleep. I arrive at the workplace at 7 a.m. When I get to the office, I turn on my computer and turn on all my office appliances, like the router, the printer, the copy machine, and sometimes the coffee maker. Usually, I attend meetings with my co-workers to interview possible buyers and regular customers. For my lunch at noon, I usually go to eat at the restaurant across the street. I rarely take my own food and heat it up in the microwave. In the afternoon, I resume my activities which include preparing documents for my boss and regularly I issue the invoices. Some days, I also have to call my boss's clients and take messages for my boss. Almost every evening, I send emails and organize meetings for the next day or meetings throughout the week. When the workday is over, I go home, I change into comfortable clothes, I cook dinner, and then I receive English classes. All right, people. What words do you remember now from the listening? A ver, ¿qué palabras recuerdan? ¿Qué oración recuerdan? A ver, así, a simple y grosso modo. Um, para el almuerzo, cruza la calle para comer en el restaurante. Great. Mm -hmm. Can you say that in English? Dario? For the lunch, I going to restaurant across the street. All right, very good, very good. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else do you remember, guys? Um, uh, she study English after the work. Yes, she has English classes. Yes, she is having an English course after work. And about what time does she say that, that she is taking that course? When does she receive the classes? Miss? Uh-huh. Eh, no, solo le quería comentar que ahorita voy saliendo del trabajo y me voy a trasladar a la casa, así que si me pregunta, ahorita solo está tu oyente. All right, Marina. Thank you very much for letting me know. All right. Bueno. Mm -hmm. Okay, then, when does she take the English course? When? What time? Uh, on the night after the work. Late, right? Late at night. Mm -hmm. After work, yes. Okay, there you go. Entonces vemos que es importante que conozcamos las ex time expressions, las expresiones de tiempo, porque miren, hay una situación bien bonita en inglés. 
que no nos da eh, una regla general, digamos. Quizás hay una regla, pero hay mil excepciones a la regla, ¿verdad? Entonces, por ejemplo, con las time expressions, mi mejor consejo es que las aprendan tal como están, ¿ok? No tratar de, bueno, ¿y, y en qué momento voy a usar in? Bueno, lo voy a usar con eh, days, lo voy a usar, eh, no, perdón, con days, no, con months, por, por, por ejemplo, con years, pero no lo puedo usar con dates or days, lo voy, voy a usar on. Entonces, hay que memorizar o usarlas tal como están las expresiones. Y muchas veces es bueno eh, not overthink about them, ¿ok? No pensar más allá de lo que estamos leyendo en el sentido fácil y práctico de decir, on Monday es on Monday always, on Friday is always on Friday. No tratar de inventar, bueno, tal vez en un momento pueda ser in. No, no, no. ¿Ok? Sino que aprenderlo de esa manera sin sin estar pensando, ¿y por qué será así? Porque a veces no hay una respuesta, ¿ok? A veces la respuesta es, inglés es así, el lenguaje es así. Igual como en español, hay muchas cosas que decimos, bueno, ¿y por qué se dice así y no así? Que suena mucho mejor, pero en realidad ya está establecido así, por, la, por los mismos hablantes, ¿verdad? Bien, entonces... Pasando de ese pequeño, eh, eh, como decir, eh, hacer ver la situación de por qué es importante aprender time expressions, es eh, que hay que ubicar correctamente las actividades en el día, en el tiempo, ¿verdad? Por eso se llaman scheduled activities. Entonces, Vamos a pasar a tomar la asistencia. We are going to call the roll and then we are going to continue with this. All right. There we go. Remember the requirements from ANSA4 are that you have to turn your camera on. And when I call your name, you have to say present. Carlos Vladimir Rodriguez Diaz. Presente. Cecilia Yasmin Mengíbar Soto. Bueno. Sí, tuve conectada a Cecilia ayer, ¿verdad? Pero no mucho tiempo. Ok. No. Okay. Claudia María Guerrero Mejía. Claudia María. Darío Antonio Alvarenga Gómez. Present teacher. Okay. Daisy Elizabeth Recinos Álvarez. Eduardo Franco Núñez. Present teacher. Okay. Emerson Ulises Monroy Calix. Imelda Xiomara Pineda Castro. Presente, Chair. Good evening. Good evening. Irma Stephanie Carranza Rivas. Present. José Alexander Hernández Carvajal. Present. José Bernardo López Montes. Present, teacher. José Gerardo Rivera Ochoa. Karen Janet Granado Sarayana. Luis Javier Castillo. Mr. Castillo, aren't you there? Not yet. Okay, Marianne Scarlett Rodriguez Luna. Marianne, ah, she was at work. Okay, she sent a message right now. Marina Yancy, she said that she was present, all right. Mauricio Antonio Velázquez. Present, teacher. Okay. Nelly Lilibet Andrade García. Present. Okay. Norma Patricia Viuda de Arrué Vázquez. 
Present teacher. Okay. Oscar Noé Magaña Martínez. Present teacher. Pablo Adalberto Abrego Vázquez. Present teacher. Sandra Leticia Peraza Sandoval. Present teacher. Tatiana Ivonne Torres de Beltrán. Present miss. Wendy Maricela Ramírez Guevara. Good evening, present. Hi, good evening, welcome. Okay. Karen Janet, no estaba Karen Janet? Not yet. Eh, Luis Javier. Hi, teacher. Hi, Claudia. Welcome. Present. Okay, very good. Uh, allow me to go to get your box here. There we go. Okay, people, thank you very much. Now we are going to continue. We were listening to an audio and we are trying to get the whole story. When we talk about something related to us uh, or whatever we wanna talk, we don't want to seem like a rabbit. We don't like to speak like this, right? It has a rhythm and it has intonation, okay? Also, we are going to make a story. It's not just listing things or activities. We are saying or telling a story for everybody to engage to what I want to say. So let's listen to this typical workday story and then we're going to continue with another activity, all right? Let's listen to the audio again. Pay attention on the activities and also when does she does the, these activities, okay? So let's listen to this again. Yesterday, I was thinking about the things I always do on weekdays, so let me tell you a little bit about my daily routine. I am the assistance manager and my job is to supervise the secretaries. Almost every day, I wake up early in the morning. The alarm goes off at exactly 5.30 a.m. Sometimes, it is quite hard to get out of bed so early because I have an English course late at night and sometimes don't get much sleep. I arrive at the workplace at 7 a.m. When I get to the office, I turn on my computer and turn on all my office appliances, like the router, the printer, the copy machine, and sometimes the coffee maker. Usually, I attend meetings with my co-workers to interview possible buyers and regular customers. For my lunch at noon, I usually go to eat at the restaurant across the street. I rarely take my own food and heat it up in the microwave. In the afternoon, I resume my activities which include preparing documents for my boss and regularly I issue the invoices. Some days, I also have to call my boss's clients and take messages for my boss. Almost every evening, I send emails and organize meetings for the next day or meetings throughout the week. When the workday is over, I go home, I change into comfortable clothes, I cook dinner, and then I receive English classes. All right. Let's mm, make a summary, okay? Let's try to retell this story and let's retell it just as she said it, all right? For example, mm, what time does she wake up? 5.30. 5.30, all right. Yes. Why do you say that? Mm -hmm. 5.30, all right. Uh, someone was going to say something? Uh, the, she said that, she said that when she mentioned that the alarm is off at that time. 
Okay, yes, the alarm goes off at 5.30. Is it easy for her to get out of the, of the bed? Get out of the bed? Is it easy? Mm. No. No? Is no, it easy for you guys? Is it easy for you, I mean, to get up in the mornings? No. 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 All right. No. <laughs> Most of the times we are kind of tired and now it's kind of cold, right? It's kind of cold. So it's so delicious to be in bed on your in your sheets. So, yeah. All right. Why does she say that uh, or what's the reason why she can't um, get up? Uh, easily. Why? It's because of the English classes. Yeah, because she's having an English curse late at night. Yes. Yeah. Is it similar to your story, right? Is it similar to your story? Yes. All right. And after... She says that she mentions that her job position. What's her job position? What does she do? What does she do? I guess she's the boss of the secretaries. She is the supervisor. The supervisor. Yes, but it has a name and she mentions a name. So when we see the audio script, then we are going to check this out, all right? But yes, that's the main activity or the purpose of her job position to supervise and provide uh, for the secretaries. All right, and what does she do when she get uh, work in the morning? What does she do? To run the PC and sure. applying in the office for copies, printer, and coffee maker. Very good, yes. Mm -hmm. And what does she do next? In the lunch, take, uh, have a lunch in a restaurant from the job. Uh, in the restaurant, across? Across the, yes. <laughs> Across the street, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, and what does she do in the afternoon? Mister. Tell me. So. All right, all right, go ahead, Wendy. Mm -hmm. In the afternoon, uh, send uh, emails. She sends emails. Yes. Mm -hmm. Emails and organize the next day. All right, third person, because we are talking about someone else, right? And organizes mm -hmm, uh, the meetings for the next day. Meetings for next day. Mm -hmm. What else does she do? Sometimes she calls, she calls the clients of her boss. Okay, yes. And what does she do with the clients? Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes she does that. It's not always, right? So, but what does she do with the clients? Do they call them? Um, she sends sometimes emails. Sometimes she with her, uh, his boss. All right, she calls. Boss. She calls clients. Okay. She calls clients. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what does she organize with the clients? A ver, a ver, ¿quién tiene más memoria que llegue hasta allá? Vamos a ver, vamos a ver. Esto ya fue más de memoria, ¿verdad? Ok, vamos entonces, we are going to see the audio script and we are going to read along. Read along it, uh, means that you are going to listen to the audio and also reading with your eyes, ok? Not allowed. 
va es along, ok, along, a lo largo de que usted escucha el audio, usted va a leer con su vista, right? That's read along with, I mean, while the audio plays. Okay, there you go. So everybody, I will share the screen for you. And I will share the, the audio screen. All right. Almost there. Here we are. Okay. Mm, doesn't give it to me. One second. No me da el audio completo y me está tirando como que fuera video. Permítanme. <clears throat> Hoy sí tiene que darme. Oh, now I get it. Now I get it. Some reason is giving me this this hard time. Okay, now here we are. No nos va a ganar esto, verdad? Vamos a ver. Ya le ganamos. Vamos a ver. Okay, here we go. Yesterday, I was thinking about the things I always do on weekdays. So let me tell you a little bit about my daily routine. I am the assistance manager and my job is to supervise the secretaries. Almost every day I wake up early in the morning. The alarm goes off at exactly 5.30 a.m. Sometimes it is quite hard to get out of bed so early because I have an English course late at night and sometimes don't get much sleep. I arrive at the workplace at 7 a.m. When I get to the office I turn on my computer and turn on all my office appliances like the router, the printer, the copy machine, and sometimes the coffee maker. Usually, I attend meetings with my co-workers to interview possible buyers and regular customers. For my lunch at noon, I usually go to eat at the restaurant across the street. I rarely take my own food and heat it up in the microwave. In the afternoon, I resume my activities, which include preparing documents for my boss, and regularly I issue the invoices. Some days, I also have to call my boss's clients and take messages for my boss. Almost every evening, I send emails and organize meetings for the next day or meetings throughout the week. When the workday is over, I go home, I change into comfortable clothes, I cook dinner, and then I receive English classes. All right. Was it easier now? Ahora fue más fácil, ¿verdad? Ya leyéndolo, comprendimos creo que casi el 100%, ¿verdad? The 100%. All right. Now we know the story. Now we'll listen to the story. Now we know how to pronounce, pronunciate this vocabulary. So now I, I will show you this slide and you are going to tell me the story, okay? You tell me the story, again, in order, right? Mm -hmm. Poniéndolo en tercera persona. She gets to work early in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. What else? Continue. She 
the turn on the computer. Turn on, on the computer in the office application. Appliances. Oh. Appliances. Yeah. Hmm? Appliances. But look, like we have to pronounce the letter S in the verb because we are talking about a third person. We are talking about her typical day at work. So we are going to say she turns on the computer and the office appliances. What else? Mm -hmm. B. She attends a meeting. Very good. What does she do at noon? She, she have lunch with the co-workers. <laughs> Very good, Jose. Uh, the only thing is that yeah. have, the third person is has. She yeah. has uh -huh. lunch. Uh -huh. She has with lunch with the co-workers at noon. Yes. Uh -huh. Does she use the microwave in the cafeteria? No. No, Rarely. she said, yeah, correct. Then we are going to use that. And we could say, she rarely, okay, mm. she rarely, mm -hmm. she rarely use, use the use. microwave in the cafeteria. Mm. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, continue the story, guys. Continue. She used the microwave. Use the microwave. In she doesn't or she rarely yes. mm -hmm. she, she rarely, rarely uses the microwave. the microwave in the cafeteria, in the cafeteria. okay uh -huh. continue the story she prepares the documents for my boss for her boss for her oh, boss for her. <laughs> yes mm -hmm. for her boss Okay, continue the story. Don't stop. She uses Jeez. the invoice. In okay. Mm -hmm. She, she issues, goes, issues issues the invoices. Mm -hmm. she, she calls, calls, she calls clients. She sometimes she said that uh -huh. that word right. She sometimes calls clients. Sometimes call clients. Calls clients. Okay. Continue. Continue the story. Don't stop. She usually she go, to, go to eat. Things. She always send a mail. All right. In the evening, she always send emails. All right. Mm -hmm. She sometimes organized meetings. All right. Continue, continue. She goes home. Correct. She uh -huh. goes go home. What happened when she gets home? When she's at home, she has she dinner. Has dinner. She has dinner. Does she cook her own dinner or does she buy her dinner? Cooking. She cooks. Yeah, she cooks her dinner. All right. And then the last activity. She has have an online English class. She has. She has. She has uh -huh. An online English class. An online English class. All right, now we know how to put all the pieces together. First, remember, we have to order chronologically the activities we do. That's uh, putting in order the scheduled activities, the everyday activities. And then after putting this in order, like, dividing the day in the morning, at noon, in the afternoon, in the evening, or at night, it's easier for us to make the story more interesting, all right? Vamos a ver entonces. Ahora es su turno, okay? Ahora es su turno. We, I'm going to say a name, and then this student is going to 
talk about the typical day at work. Pero ahora vamos a usar nuestra propia información. Now we are going to use our own information, all right? You can guide, I mean, get a guide from this list because here we have some activities that are similar, all right? And then you can add some more. But now I'm going to ask Emerson. Emerson, please tell us about your typical day at work or week day, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, usually wake up early in the morning uh, about the uh, 5 a.m. and prepare my my clothes before to take a shower and uh, after then take my breakfast and I help my wife with the uniform for my children and uh, after then Go, go home. I arrived at uh, uh, my workplace uh, about uh, 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. uh, getting my, my co-workers and uh, preparing my inspection mm -hmm. for the, for the products on, on production. And after then, I I make a report about the inspection, the, the um, day after the, how do you say in English, the day anterior? The day before, yesterday. Before yesterday. Yeah. Uh -huh. and after them, um, I take my lunch um, 12 noon. I go to I go to my home for my for my lunch, and I return my work uh, at 1 p.m. After then, I follow with my inspection and. Uh, make a, a meeting with my co-workers and a team or group quality and then, then I go out to my work at 5 p.m. After then I want to go to my work or to my home, take my dinner, uh, take, take shower and Let's have my class, English class. All right, very good, Emerson. So now we are going to check just a little uh, vocabulary that you are using. Let's remember that uh, there are these expressions that we can use. I mean, there are verbs that goes well with an activity. For example, go home is correct, but it's correct when you arrive home. When you go from your home to your work, then we say, I leave home, all right? I leave home, okay, and get to work, okay? I leave home. Ese sería el mejor verbo para decir salgo de la casa, ¿verdad? I leave home. Ahora, after then son dos diferentes. Entonces, vamos a usar after y podemos decir after that. After that, o sea, después de lo que dije o después de eso, after that. Y then lo vamos a usar el solito, ¿verdad? Lo vamos a usar el solito. No after, then, no combina, okay? And then, when we say go to my home, we don't say to my home unless, unless you want to specify whose home you go to. For example, if you say go to my home, maybe 
sometimes I go to my parents' home or sometimes I go to my, uh, I don't know, a parent-in-law, okay? So if we express this specifically, then we say that. But usually the activity is go home. Porque ya se sabe que cuando uno sale de la casa no se va para otro lado, ¿verdad? sino que se va para su casa. Entonces, go home. Yeah, I go home. Ahora, si usted quiere decir me regreso a casa, puede decir go back home y no hay problema. Then, make a meeting. Tenemos una, un verbo que lo hemos aprendido desde el uno y hay que ponerle coco, ¿verdad? Entonces, organize, organize meetings or organize a meeting, ¿ok? Pero si ya sabemos que está programada para ese día o para esa hora normalmente on weekdays o en los días de semana o de trabajo, podemos usar el verbo have. I have a meeting. Y ahí ya entendemos que usted la organizó probablemente en el momento. Eso no interesa en ese momento, ¿ok? I have a meeting. Entonces, vemos que las expresiones ya están dadas. No, no tratemos de ponerle otras palabras, ¿verdad? Las mismas vamos a usar siempre, ¿ok? Then, cuando decimos, I go out my work, volvemos a lo mismo. I live work, ¿ok? I live work. Porque es obvio pues que es su trabajo, entonces ya no necesitamos decir my work. Vamos a decir solo live work, okay? I live work at around, okay? Then we specify the time, all right? Then, there we go. Fueron muy pocas, mire, en las que hubo un poquito de eh, arreglo, pero vamos bien. ¿Alguien quiere hacer su historia? Emerson, lo felicito. Congratulations, you did a really good job telling your story, your daily, um, your typical work day. All right, maybe Norma wants to share. Norma? Please share your typical work day. Okay. Hello. Um, I get out every day so early. Um, maybe three o'clock. Um, I leave my work um, for, for 20 minutes because the traffic is so busy every day. Um, um, I arrive on, at my work. Um, the yesterday and today uh, five thirty uh, because his preference is early in my job and um I um Como, como, ay, se me olvidó la palabra. Don't worry. Uh, say it in uh, Spanish. Este, digamos, yo empiezo hasta las siete. I start so, until okay. seven. Uh -huh. Ok, ok. Mm -hmm. I start until seven. Um, I clean the, the office, the, my boss, the, the manager. The assistant, the manager, assisting the the um, credits. ¿Cómo se diría? Credits, credits, credits. Mm -hmm. Area. Credit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the office, the marketing, the the paramen informa information, um, the account. Accounting. Accountant. Uh, uh -huh. Accounting. Accounting. All right. Accounting. Uh -huh. um, um, also, uh, assisting the meeting. 
Uh, I clean the floor. I clean the the desk, the computer, the the copy machine. Um, it, uh, como se dice, revisar, revisar. Check, check. Okay, check the emails, check the WhatsApp, um, the check the staff too, the check um, the materials, uh, the supply, um, and sometimes the people uh, they need some activities and the people say norma here norma here um, <laughs> norma here day. and norma there yes all right uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. every day every day um, i finish my my garden Maybe five. All right. Mm -hmm. um, I come back my home um seven o'clock. Sometimes seven thirty. Y, um, luego, ¿cómo se dice, teacher? Uh, luego, then, 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 or later, then, after. Then, ah, okay. After. Um, I take my dinner because next I I have my class English. Um, uh, my class English finish in ten o'clock. Um, next, uh, I have my my homework homework. I I go back my bed and um, maybe eleven eleven because I have a little time for the my daughters and um, maybe I sleep eleven o'clock. All right, very good story. This is a very extended story. You are really busy, Norma. You yes. have very busy days. All right, yes. but this is important. And I, and I really congratulate you because yes. I see that you use your vocabulary. Now, uh, when we, uh, I mean, the yes. only observation I can make is that you have to refine your pronunciation. The farm to okay. refine your pronunciation is closing the words at the end. Close the word. For example, Love it that. sounds like get out instead of get up. Close, right? Close the ending. Get up. Yeah. Get up. Get up. Close. Uh -huh. okay, instead of you. get. Porque si no se le oye como salir. Get out. Okay. Okay. Ajá. Get si solo up. dice get up, get up, ahí ya no cerró. Entonces el significado se siente otro. Entonces sería get okay. up. Right? Get up. Okay. Me levanto, ¿verdad? A ver, es preferent. Siempre recordemos de poner un sujeto, ¿verdad? Que es lo más fácil para ordenar la idea. Empecemos con el sujeto y lo demás va a venir como... Eh, el orden lógico que sería sujeto, verbo, complemento, subject, verb, and complement. Entonces diríamos I prefer, ¿ok? I prefer to get early, to get early, porque eso me decía usted, ¿verdad? Que usted prefiere mm -hmm. estar antes en el trabajo. So I prefer to get early than late, right? I prefer to get early than late. Than late sería mejor antes que después. Mejor antes que después. Mm, than okay. late. Ahí ya resumimos todo lo que eh, alrededor de, de su deseo de estar antes. Because you start work 
at 7 a.m. That's what you said, right? And you want to have everything ready. Then you say, you said, uh, I clean. I don't remember well if you say my boss's office, right? My boss's office. But okay. you have to say first, you have to say first the noun and then office. For example, you said my boss's office, the manager's office, credits office, right? To make okay. the idea that office is the noun, but you say, what office are you referring to? You say first, right? Credit office. Then you said accounting office or department. You can say department. You can say area. You can say any other word. But first, you say the name of the area. For example, you said, I clean the floors. Con decir the floors, it's okay, right? I clean the floors. Ahí no hago floor cleaning, right? Porque no estoy hablando de un lugar así como la oficina o como un área, un departamento. Entonces, nombramos el departamento primero y después decimos department, office o lo que vayamos a ver. Okay? ok. Luego, okay, assisting the meeting, assisting, el verbo sería como si usted uh, atiende a la gente en la, en la, en la reunión proveyéndoles lo que necesitan, está bien decir. Eh, assist. Está bien decir assist. Si usted va a la reunión, entonces attend the meeting. Ajá. Y usualmente, y usualmente está bien decir attend the meeting even that you are going to serve everybody. Right? So it's okay if you say attend the meeting because you have to be part of it. So it's okay. So let's remember okay. the verbs. Okay? So okay. thank you very much, Norma. You did a really good job. You have a lot of vocabulary. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank Use you. your vocabulary. Continue thank like you. that. All right, people. So now, what are we going to do? Hmm. This is very interesting because we want to, uh, uh, to talk about our daily uh, routine, but at work, OK? Why? Because we want to relate this with the, re with the responsibilities and the scheduled activities. So we use frequency adverbs, okay? We use the frequency adverbs to express the frequency uh, th uh, that we do that activity, okay? With the frequency that we do that activity. For example, we have some words to define that. And I know that you know the frequency adverbs. Which are the frequency adverbs? Can you name them? Always? Again. Okay. I'm sorry? Again. Okay. Again? Again, it will be like an adverb, all right? But it's not the frequency exactly, all right? Uh, well, there are a lot. There are a lot, and you are right, Mauricio, okay? okay? Hay muchísimos, hay muchísimos. Quizás podríamos decir que hay una lista interminable, okay? An infinite, an infinite, infinite number. Uh, infinite number, I'm sorry. Uh, pero existen más comunes, okay? Existen más comunes. Por ejemplo, decíamos, por ahí dijo often someone. Who said often? Me. Thank you, Nelly. Uh -huh. Often is more common. Uh -huh. What else? Usually. Usually. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Rarely. 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 Mm -hmm. Hardly ever. Hardly ever. Ever, uh huh. Never. Never. Sometimes. Sometimes. Yes. And we have the feeling when we can say this word at the beginning of the sentence, in the middle of the sentence, uh, of or at the end of the sentence, right? So um, we want to go to the next topic. Ok, vamos a ir al siguiente tema. Yo sé que todos quieren dar su typical day, pero vamos a hacer como Mauricio hizo, de enviarnos su typical day al WhatsApp, ok? 
solamente Norma y Emerson no lo van a hacer así. Entonces yo voy a tratar de ponerles de esta manera sus observaciones, ¿verdad? Así como lo hicimos acá. Ok, solo escrita va a estar bien, que me la envíen. Entonces, vamos a ver que we are going to study the frequency adverbs. Frequency adverbs. These are words to express the frequency that we do something. Okay. They express time also. Okay, this is your video conference number seven. I haven't said that. So, the frequency adverbs. These are words to express the frequency. Okay, how often do we do something? How many times we do an activity, okay? And the objective to see this. A ver, ¿por qué creen que sería importante? Why do you think this is important? Why do you think this is important? Mm -hmm. Because in all the fields, in all the fields, there are activities to do. There are people mm, hired for doing activities at certain time. There are, there are work schedules, there are home schedules, there are mm, a family schedules. There are different kinds of schedules because there are different activities we are always doing. More if you're active people, right? So look, at the end of this class, you will be able to ask and tell information related to Marketing strategies, marketing strategies. Vamos a cambiar un poco el giro. Okay, we are going to jump into marketing tonight. And we are going to talk about strategies related to a restaurant first as an example, but then we are going to talk about our company. And we are going to use the adverbs of frequency. Okay, so our class agenda was the feedback, listening activity, okay. Now I want to ask this question, what are some successful restaurants you know? Then we are having a conversation time. We have the breakout rooms where we are going to ask and, an and answer questions, just like this ones. And we are going to talk about the marketing strategies in your company. For example, how often does your company, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, or um, how often do they do so-and-so, okay? So let's go and let's, Look at what is marketing. Do you know what marketing is? Do you know what marketing is? So let's look at uh, first. Um, I'm sorry. Look at some vocabulary. Okay. What is marketing? Do you have any idea what is marketing? Can someone tell me what is marketing for you? <laughs> Is the way you promote some, some products to sell to people. Okay, very good. How you present and also uh, get the incomes, right? Like, uh, okay, you sell the products. Very good. Mm -hmm. But there are ways, methods, right? They are strategies, plans, programs, promotions, etc. Okay, etc. So let's talk about mm, the restaurants in El Salvador. Mm, what kind of restaurants do we have in El Salvador? Do we have fast food restaurants? Yes. Yes, we do. Do we have um, elegant restaurants, fancy restaurants? Yes. Yes, we do, right? Aha. Uh -huh. Do we have typical food restaurant? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. How do we call this kind of local food restaurants? How do we call them? 
and El Salvador. Comedores, verdad? Comedores, that's the name in Spanish for those um, typical or local food restaurants. And also, mm, uh, for example, what's the typical food in El Salvador? Pupusas. Pupusas. How do Salvadorian people sell the pupusas? <laughs> In the streets, yeah, very good. Yes, yes, yes. Those are more delicious, I think, right? <laughs> Instead of going to a pupuseria, right? No, no, it's okay. It's okay. We go to pupuserias, right? Uh, they are called pupuserias. And we can find other products there. What other products can you find in a pupuseria? Fried platinums. Fried platinums. Uh huh. Fried platinums. What chocolate. else? Chocolate. Hot chocolate. Yes. Hot Coffee. chocolate. Coffee. Coffee. Horchata. Mm -hmm. Soda. Yes. Soda. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Soda, horchata, cebada. Mm -hmm. Ensalada. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, what do we use uh, to uh, make the companion uh, to the pupusas? For example, what's the best? Um, this is the word. I forgot the word right now. I have it right here. The best guarnition. Guarnition. Okay. What is the best guarnition for the pupusa? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> tomato sauce, right? Tomato when, sauce. When you say to, uh, I mean, to a um, stranger, uh, or maybe you tell uh, tomato sauce, they think about ketchup. It's yeah, hot. They think about ketchup. That's the only thing they have in their minds. But if we say uh, tomato sauce we have to explain how it is made and the flavor the texture for they to understand what kind of tomato sauce we're talking about all right but now what do you think make uh could make a pupuseria a successful pupuseria over the others what do you think? What do you think? What are the aspects that could make to a pupuseria a successful pupuseria over the others? The good quality and oh. its price. Price, good quality, yes. Wow. Uh -huh. Location. Location, all right. Mm -hmm. Presentation the the restaurant. All right. Uh huh. The cleaning, right? The cleaning yeah. up. Mm -hmm. the yeah, it is the cleanliness and also uh the decoration in the place yeah. or in the uh, location. Mm, what else do you think that makes Mm, a pupuseria different from the others? <coughs> the, the variety, variety. Variety, variety. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, the variety that they offer, right? Cheese pupusas, chicharron pupusas, that's pork pupusas. Uh, beans and cheese. Beans and cheese. Uh -huh. Yes. Um, squash. Uh -huh. Squash pupusas. Diríamos en Spanish, ayote pupusas. Right? Mm -hmm. And you said? Shrimp. 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 Yes, shrimp. Yes, and crazy pupusas. Yeah, crazy pupusas. Everything that you want to put I in. Cook pupusas. I cook pupusas Pusa tomorrow. 
All right, Norma. Yay. So you know how to make them. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay, now imagine, imagine that they call you and tells you, look, we want to increase our sales in this pupuceria. We are having low income. So we need you to get in charge of increasing the sales. What strategies would you propose? What strategies would you propose? We could promote. Tell me, we could, Jose. We could promote it uh, the web socials. Great, great. Social media, right? The social media. Yes, that's a very good strategy. And I think that's the best or the top at this moment, right? Yeah, what else? What else can we propose? Mm -hmm. Marina. Uh -huh. Teacher, how do you say anuncio? Advertisement. 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 We could ask a uh, radio tells an advertisement. Very of... good. We can buy advertisement on the radio. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Mm -hmm. Here I have a list. You can read these marketing strategies. These are just made up, all right? This is not by the book. This is just thinking about a pupuceria, okay? So we could say give away promotional items, give away promotional items. For example, they say also that they can uh, put a stamp on their bags, for example. So branded, branded packages, branded packages. Que diga ahí, ¿verdad? Pupusería Lolita, gracias por su compra, ¿verdad? So that's branded uh, packages. All right. What else? Offer discounts. Oh, giveaway promotional items are like, for example, uh, if you uh, buy this combo, then we'll give you the cup, all right? You can take away the cup, yeah? The cup is yours. Así como eh, una vez, fíjense, fui, once I went to el, um, el basurero. Do you know el basurero in Montserrat? A very, uh, I mean, that's a top place yeah. on soups. All right. But it was Mother's Day. It was Mother's Day. And they were giving away these cups. Very, um, they were handmade, like ceramic, but... They look very nice. I have it. I, I still have it uh, in some place right there. I still have it. But that's a good strategy because I'm going to go again and I'm always looking at the brand and the promotional item, right? The mm -hmm. name of the company and what they sell, right? So now, offer discounts, offer discounts. Do you think that's a good um, strategy? Is that a good strategy? Mm, it could be like if you buy 10 pupusas, then we you pay only 10 and we give you 11, right? So offering discounts. It's not exactly that you are going to lower the prices, but you are going to give something extra for the price the customer is paying, right? Okay, what about extended opening schedules? Extended opening schedules. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Extended opening schedules. Maybe all the pupusarias around this neighborhood close 
early, maybe at 9 p.m. they're closed. But we finish the English classes at 10 p.m. and we want to buy pupusas after 10. So if they extend the opening schedule, we could buy the pupusas, right? And that will make the <clears throat> pupuseria around your house uh, increase the sales, right? What about the next one? Create new combinations or create combos, right? Create mm -hmm. combos. Hmm? Have you seen a kind of promotion like this? ¿Han visto alguna promoción como esta? Create new combinations or combos? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you give me an example? Uh, three pupusas and one soda for two dollars, for three dollars. Very nice. good. Yes, that's a combo. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. What if we offer new dishes in a pupuseria? Do you think it will increase the sales? What do you in, think? In pupuseria markup, uh -huh. offering different typical plate. All right, uh, yeah. Yuca, mm -hmm. yuca frita. Nuegados. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. En dulce, empanadas, empanada, etc. All right, very That's good. Typical plate. All right, good. But in this case, I think the strategy goes for a different way. Like if I make a different pupusa from the others, for example, no one in the area is making. Um, I don't know, we could say spinach pupusas, okay? No one in the area. And I can make spinach pupusas. I think it will make different. That's a new dish. It's still the pupusa, but in a new combination, right? It's a new presentation. It's a new product by my own. Mm, how do you think they invented the crazy pupusa? Yeah, the crazy pupusa. They invented the crazy pupusa. How do you think they made that? ¿Cómo creen que se les ocurrió? How they came up with this idea? They needed to sell more, right? They needed to sell more. And then they say, well, mm, people is asking for something strange or exotic or Friend, right yeah. so we're going to make this and this and put and put everything and let's see how how the, how does it taste right and then they saw that it was good and people liked it and then boom new crazy pupusa and everyone wanted to copy that new dish right everybody wanted to copy the new dish all right for example no one in the area makes rice pupusas, only corn pupusas, then you can offer the a, uh, rice pupusa. Even though it's not a new dish because it has been already invented, but I think it's going to make you different from the others around. But let's think about the platen uh, dough, la masa de platano. ¿Han probado las, las tortillas de plátano verde? ¿Sí? No. ¿Never? No. Oh, God. You... No way. Mm. <laughs> Delicious. Yeah. I remember uh, that when I was a little girl, my grandmother, um, she did this kind of um, dough. Um, she grated the plantain on a little of uh, this corn dough. Entonces, rayaba el plátano verde sobre la, un poco de masa de maíz. Okay, and it made the dough really flavory, really flavory. And they add a little of oil and a little of salt. And then, <laughs> You will tell me with requesón <laughs> cottage. <laughs> yes. Okay. Let's invent or let's come up with the idea of making 
potato pupusas, and it will be a new dish, right? It's pupusas, but a different pupusa. It could be a very good marketing strategy. For example, what about the donuts? Mr. Donut, mm -hmm. what do they do on September? What do you do? What do they do in September? And two for one. Uh huh. Yes, two, two for, for one. one. Yeah. Yes. There you go. So those are strategies for increasing sales and also to increase the value too, right? To mm -hmm. <laughs> I mm -hmm. make prices higher. Also, that's a good strategy. Okay. Then what about the uh to change the decoration of the place maybe people don't like the colors it's not attractive then they uh, i mean you can acquire new furniture for people to stay more comfortable in the location right so it will make a difference and you could increase in, i'm sorry increase sales right what about the advertising that Jose Bernardo said? Mm, on radio, mm -hmm. by the social media, also um, flags, right? Flags, mm -hmm. flyers, yeah, volantes, flyers. Mm -hmm. All right, there you go. Social media content is not only the advertising with all the art or all the money for buying advertisement. But content, we need the comments of people, right? We need the comments of people and we start a conversation about the place, about the dishes, and then everybody starts speaking out this new place around, this new dish around. So that's a very good strategy to put this thing in a content in social media, right? Then offer delivery service. Do you think that will make a uh, difference in your sales, offering delivery service, maybe partnership with the delivery services that they exist on these days. For example, uh, partnership with Uber Eats or with now uh, Pedidos Ya Now is Hugo, right? So yeah, those uh, delivery uh, platforms. What about carrying out these um, products? Offering disposables, right? Offering disposables for people who transport the products comfortably. Sometimes you go to buy yuca frita, right? You go to buy yuca frita and it has sauce in it. If you don't provide a good disposable dish that contains everything in place, then people is not going to go back unless they take the olla, right? <laughs> unless they take their own dish, right? So these are marketing strategies that we can implement, but this has to come up after a research observation sometimes is simply observation how often do you implement a marketing strategy in the company or in the restaurant so now we are going to see uh in this other activity okay here we've got some i'm sorry some strategies if you see change the menu, rotate shifts, new dessert, promotional item. And we have four branches. Uh, we have San Salvador, La Paz, La Union, Usulután. Okay. Let's remember that the question to ask the frequency that you do something is how often, okay? How often? And in the present tense, we use does. Why? Because these are kind of scheduled activities, right? So we could say, how often does San Salvador branch change the menu? And looking at the chart, 
looking at the chart, we could give an answer. We could give an answer, right? Always means no time uh, left behind, all right? Always means the 100% of the times it happens, okay? Then we have sometimes, sometimes. And we have often, often, often. I think it's before sometimes, sometimes. And I think that sometimes it's before often, sometimes, all right? So if we think about often, let's look at this. The 100% of the times is right here, okay? Like 16 could be 16 days, mm, yeah. Uh, 16 times, yeah, in October, yes. That's the maximum, right? The 100%. So now let's think. How often does El Salvador branch change the menu? Si yo le pongo que often, ¿cómo respondería eso? A ver. Lo vamos a poner en un cuadrito así encima. ¿Mm? Empiezo con un sujeto. A ver, ¿cuál es el sujeto? ¿De quién me están preguntando? El Salvador Branch. Ok, that's the a subject. Grammatically, hmm, the order of the words and the general rule is that the frequency adverb goes after the subject and before the verb. So this is the place to say the frequency adverb often. Mm -hmm. e, and I go to the simple present to say this. She inches, okay, because it's the third person is it. Since I would your branch often change the menu. Bien, gramaticalmente la regla dice que often va cabal, después del sujeto y antes del verbo. Ok, but sometimes it sounds better if it goes in a different place. A ver, probémoslo al principio. ¿Cómo sonaría al principio? A ver, ¿y cómo les gusta más? How do you like it more? A ver, often San Salvador branch changes the menu. Ok. Y si lo ponemos al final, ¿cómo sonaría? A ver, ¿alguien lo dice? Someone can say it at the end. Aha. How do you feel better? Which one do you feel better? At the beginning, at the end, or in the middle? Ajá. ¿Cómo lo sienten más bonito o mejor? Ustedes lo van a escuchar de las tres formas, ¿ok? You are going to listen to this in the three ways, different ways. That's a normal speaking, ¿ok? That's an everyday speaking. But the rule says that... For not making any mistake, we are going to place the frequency adverb right between the subject and the verb, all right? Okay. The general rule is between the subject and the verb, and you are going to make any mistake if you do that, all right? Sometimes you are going to listen to people saying this at the beginning or the end, and it sounds good. So your task, I mean, you're a... Activity will be imitating, okay? Cuando usted lo oiga, usted va a sentir, hey, se oye mejor así, eh, suena bien así, o dependiendo del contexto, depending on the context. Pero vamos a seguir la regla general, que es que vaya en ese lugar. Entonces, vamos a ver cuál sería la siguiente pregunta exactamente igual a esta para la paz. Armémosla. Mm -hmm. 
Moment. Empezamos con how often, ¿verdad? How often. Does. Does. Tenemos que poner el auxilio. Does. Does La Paz Brian. Does Brian Chain. Change, change uh -huh. change the menu. The menu. Mm -hmm. Okay. A ver, de acuerdo a esto, what will be the answer according to this chart? What will be the answer? La Paz. La Paz, La Paz Branch. Mm -hmm. uh, often change. Often too? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. There you go. Oops. Mm -hmm. Then I go here. Mm hmm. So it will be La Paz. Huh? ¿Cuál sería el frequency adverb que le pega mejor? Sometimes. Okay. Hmm? Change. Okay, the meaning. The meaning. All right. What about the question for La Unión? A ver, someone ask the question and then someone is going to answer. Pablo, please ask the question for, the, for La Unión and Mauricio answers, okay? Uh, how often? How often La Unión branch? Change the meaning. Plus the auxiliary. Ah, that's, that's. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, how often does La Unión branch change the meaning? Okay. Mauricio? La, La Unión branch gradually change the meaning. Very good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Rarely. 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 Yes, very good. Mm -hmm. Okay, la only on branch. Rarely changes. Miren, changes. Changes the menu. Changes the menu. All right. Uh -huh. uh, what about Zulutan? What would be the question? Claudia Maria. Um, uh, how often does Zulutan change the menu? Hmm. What will be the answer, uh, Jose Bernardo? Um, La Union no. Branch. Usulután. Usulután, oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, Usulután branch often changes the menu. All right. Okay. Now let's remember we have this word almost. Almost mean, means casi. 
okay? Not complete always, could be sometimes. Not a complete, I mean, not, yeah, complete sometimes could be a often, right? So we could say almost sometimes, almost uh, always, almost never, almost, yeah, we could say more with those, but rarely it's more the very or so different, right? But almost is a very good helping word, okay? Almost, casi. Okay, entonces acá estamos más cerca de always, ¿verdad? Estamos más cerca del always. Entonces podríamos decir que Usulután es... Um, Usulutan branch, almost always, right? Almost always changes the menu, right? También, suena bien, okay? Teacher, I can Come say, in? I can say more often change the menu. Usulutan branch, more often change the menu. Very good, because you are comparing, okay? You are comparing okay. saying more because the other word is less, right? So you are comparing who does this in a more frequency or more frequently. Uh, so yes, you can say more often, but comparing with the other, all right? For example, okay. you say, um, seeing the chart, more you can often, say. Uh, uh, can say, Usulta uh, branch, more often changing the minimum than San Salvador. Yes, ajá, but in that case, el orden de las palabras cambia un poquito, pero sí, sí lo puede utilizar. Okay. And it is correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so now we have the next rotate shifts, new dessert, promotional items, etc. Okay, ahorita ya hicimos uno acá, ¿verdad? Entonces, vamos a ir a hacer los tres siguientes, okay? No vamos a complicar la situación. Vamos a hacer exactamente lo mismo que hemos hecho, ¿ok? No vamos a hacer otra cosa. Just to practice how to structure the question to ask for the frequency that with, I mean, that you do something, ¿ok? How many times you do something. So that's what we are going to practice right now. So let's go to the breakout room and let's do that. I think I can do this if I'm not wrong. Okay, estas las vamos a poner en el chat. We're going to put this, I mean, all the answers on the chat. May not come correct. Yes. Ese rarely, le falta una R, okay? Rarely, rarely. Vale, lo vamos a dejar bien para que lo tomen como ejemplo. Rarely. Ahí, rarely. Ok. I'll stop sharing. Then I'll send it through the WhatsApp group, the chart. There you have it. And let's go to the breakout rooms. There we go.
please everybody join your room. Hello, Norma. Hello, Norma. Está ausente unos minutitos. Ya va a regresar. Ah, all right, all right, Irma. Ah. Hola, hola. Hi, Norma. Hola. Teacher. Eh, solo una consultita es Fíjese que no entendí muy bien qué es lo que vamos a hacer. Only y ask que the question. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Only create the question. Practice the question. Ah, practicar las preguntas. Yes, and the answers, looking at the chart. Ok, ok. Uh -huh. Ok, thank you, teacher. All right. Uh -huh. Thank you, thank you. Good. Estefanía regresó. Sí, aquí estoy. Ok, ya ah, pues vamos a practicar, dice la teacher, las preguntas y las respuestas. Uh -huh. eh, si quiere, le pregunto y usted me responde. Y después me pregunta a usted y yo le respondo. Ok. Es en base a lo que hicimos, va. Uh -huh. Vaya, entonces le voy a preguntar, vaya. How often does La Paz Brunch? Chain the menu. How often does La Paz branch related to Ocasio? Oh, no, sorry. Mm. Tengo. 
sí, tengo mal, es que en el chat no me aparecen, entonces le tomé una captura. Y salen unas equivocadas. Ajá. Ajá, pero pero ahí creo que podría responder este eh, la past branch sometimes change the menu, como uh -huh. es en base a, a, la, a la estadística que tenemos ahí, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Entonces, puede ser eh, sometimes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Vaya. Eh, no, no, entonces no tiene nada. Sí, 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 sí ya lo encontró. Ya, encontró. ya, sí. Si gusta, lo repetimos otra vez. Vaya. How often does La Paz branch change the menu? Often. Vamos por la otra, la fila, el new dessert. Mm -hmm. Vaya, dice, how often does San Salvador branch eh, chain, no, branch no. new dessert. Often, often, man. Okay, pongam often en la tercera. San Salvador, de parente often. La paz. Hello, how's it going? No Hello, teacher. Hello, Sandra. How's it going? Yo, yo honestamente no le entendí. Y okay. Nelly no sé, no, no sé, no sé qué se hizo. <laughs> Sandra, tenemos que hacer nada más las preguntas tal como las que hicimos, ¿ok? Para cada una de las estrategias. ¿Con qué frecuencia hacen esa, esa eh, toman o hacen esa estrategia de, de mercadeo? Las eh, sucursales, ¿verdad? Ya hicimos cuatro, entonces ustedes siguen haciendo las demás. Ok, ok. Va, voy a intentar a ver si me sale. Es exactamente igual y lo que estamos practicando es solamente el mismo orden de las palabras. No cambia absolutamente nada. Ok.
Hello, Claudia Maria. Hi, teacher. You're alone here, right? I think yes. Miss Javier is as a listener tonight. All right. Uh -huh. so. But the, but do you try to complete the chart? Not really. But in this moment. All right. It's just to complete the chart with the questions. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. There you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hi, teacher. Hi, Eduardo. Eh, estaba de oyente, yo. All right, but now you are available. Okay, okay. Muy bien. Are okay, you available now? Available. Right yes. now. Oh, all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, Eduardo. But I'm going, I'm going to call everyone back, all right, to the main room. So yes. we're going to do it in the main room, all right? Okay, thank okay, you, okay, thank All right, everyone, welcome back to the main room. I just wanted to uh, recall the structure of a question when we want to ask for the frequency of an activity, right? We use the phrase or the question phrase, how often, okay? How often? How often means con qué frecuencia. How often, qué tan seguido, qué tan a menudo, con qué frecuencia. How often. Then I am going to add the subject, okay? There you go. The subject gives me the auxiliary that I have to agree with. So, for example, if it is he, she, it, I am going to use does, right? If it is I, you, we, and they, I am going to use do, okay? In this case, the branches are it because they are, uh, we are talking about each one separately. So how often does San Salvador branch, that's the subject, okay? The subject. Mm -hmm. After the subject, then I write the action or the activity I am asking for the frequency that they do it. So I'm going to say, how often does the Salvador branch rotate shifts? That is the marketing strategy that we're talking about, right? So we say this. So what is the structure then? Hmm? What is the structure then? A ver, ¿quién recuerda la estructura? Sí, a veces les gusta a los estudiantes decir la estructura gramatical y apegarse a ella, ¿verdad? Aunque es mejor practicarla de una sola vez, ¿verdad? Para que después no nos cueste estar haciendo el match, si lo hice bien o no, y volver al, al traductor y, y, y volver a buscar. No, vamos a usarlo de una vez. Ya lo conocemos. 
Entonces, pero a ver, ¿quién recuerda la estructura? How often plus does auxiliar plus más, subject subject más complemento plus uh -huh, verb in the base form uh -huh, plus complement plus the question mark okay so this is the structure to ask how frequently we do something, okay? For the third person, okay? For the third person, because this subject is eat, this one, he or she. That is why we are using the subject. Okay, and then do plus subject plus the verb in the face form plus the complement plus the question mark, okay? This is just to remember the grammatic um, or the grammar structure. So now, ¿cómo entonces íbamos a hacer las preguntas que teníamos en la chart? A ver, vamos a ver para rotate fish. I'm sorry, shift fish. Ah, ya se me confundió la lengua. Vamos a ver, how often does in Salvador branch rotate shift? Ajá. Esta sería la primera, ¿verdad? Luego, la siguiente, ¿cuál sería? The next one. How often does La Paz branch rotate fish? That's shift, I'm sorry. Uh, shift. There you go. Okay. Y ahí vamos. Y de acuerdo a la cartilla que teníamos ahí o a la gráfica, to the chart, we were going to give an answer for this. Okay? So this was the structure. So now stop sharing. And here we go. I will share the screen and you are going to tell me what you did. All right? Here we go. Here we've got it. <clears throat> teníamos que completar este cuadro, estos cuadros, con la misma pregunta. ¿Qué era lo que cambiaba? La estrategia y el sujeto. La estrategia en este caso era el complemento. Y el sujeto era la, el branch, ¿verdad? Del lugar. El San Salvador, La Paz, La Unión. Y aquí tenían un ejemplo para hacerlo. Miren. Entonces... Eh, Hubieron varios que dijeron que no lo entendieron, pero eh, el momento de preguntar en dónde era. Antes de irnos al break of room, porque perdimos el objetivo de haber practicado exactamente lo mismo que estaba en el cuadro. Solamente íbamos a cambiar subject, íbamos a cambiar el, eh, eh, la estrategia o el complement, ¿verdad? Entonces, eh, ahí les queda de tarea para los que no lo habían entendido. Y si hay alguna pregunta, por favor, díganme en este momento. Is there any question so far? ¿Hay alguna pregunta acerca de la actividad que hicimos? No questions. No questions. All right. It's 9.58 right now. So we are going to uh, finish the class for today. Allow me to call the roll. Please turn your camera on. And when I call your name, please say present. Please say present.
Carlos Vladimir Rodríguez Díaz. Present teacher. All right. Cecilia Yasmin Menjibar Soto. Claudia María Guerrero Mejía. Present. Darío Antonio Alvarenga Gómez. Daisy Elizabeth Recinos Álvarez. Eduardo Franco Núñez. I hear teacher. Thank you. Emerson Ulises Monroy Calix. Marlene, ¿qué te la cama? ¿Qué te la cama? Imelda Xiomara Pineda Castro. Present teacher, good night. Emma Stephanie Carranza Rivas. Have a very good night, you too. Present. Jose Alexander Hernández Carvajal. Present. Jose Bernardo López Montes. Present teacher. Jose Gerardo Rivera Ochoa. Karen Janet Granado Sorellana. Luis Javier Castillo. Present. Okay. Mariana Scarlett Rodríguez Luna. Marina Chancy Sandoval Bonilla. Mauricio Antonio Velázquez. Nelly Lilibet Andrade García. Present. Norma Patricia Viuda de Arrué Vázquez. Present teacher. Oscar Noé Magaña Martínez. Present teacher. Okay. Pablo Adalberto Abrego Vázquez. Present teacher. Sandra Leticia Peraza Sandoval. Present teacher. Tatiana Ivonne Torres de Beltrán. Present teacher. Wendy Maricela Ramírez Guevara. Present teacher. Okay, here we go, guys. Teacher, With... eh, uh -huh. mi micrófono lo tenía bloqueado. Dije present. Oh, thank you, Mauricio. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for you. All right, people. Uh, the session one on one for tonight it was for Emerson, right? Emerson, do you want to stay? Okay. All right. Then, everybody, please do your homework and have a very good night. See good you night. tomorrow. Bye bye. Bye-bye. Take a good night. rest. Bye-bye. Okay, here we are, Emerson. How can I assist you today? Okay. okay. I have a question with the uh, song hidden in the plot of them. Don't have a clarity in the context. On the platform. Oh, all right. What a uh, homework is it? Section two. No. 
Este paz. Aquí. I'm sorry, I'm not able to understand um, because you sound like with a buff or something. Yeah, it's buffing. So, um, what number did you say? I'm sorry. Okay. Number, the homework number six. Number six, all right. So it's section two. Mm -hmm. yes. For example, in the question number one, mm -hmm. my boss down mm -hmm. his office every day. Mm -hmm. In this case, uh, we I I did uh, use the ing. Mm, nope. No, in this case, we are studying the simple present and you have to agree the form of the verb with the subject. If it is a third person or if it is uh, I, you, we, or they. If it is plural, right? Or if it is I, what form of the verb we are going to use. So allow me to share the screen with you and let's do it together, all right? And the first one will be my boss, could be a woman and or it could be a man. So it could be he or she. Then what's the form uh, for the third person? Let me just share the screen. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is the form of the verb? The form of the verb, remember that we add the letter S for the third person, right? We add a letter S for a third person. So we use cleans, right? Mm -hmm. My boss cleans his office every day. In this case, they are talking about a man. And we know that because they are using his, his office. So it's a man. It's like if we were saying he cleans his office every day. Number two will be from I... I, then I work. need the verb work. work. Yes, uh, okay. from Monday to Friday. Mm -hmm. okay. My sister is she, right? Uh -huh. So if it is negative, I have to use the auxiliary. And the auxiliary for the third person is does. Mm -hmm. I add the particle not and I say does not. But I make it short and I contract it and I say I. My sister doesn't, okay? Doesn't take a shower every day. We can say no takes, we can say don't take. We say doesn't take. Number four, mm -hmm. what do you think? The bus? The bus lives. 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 Uh -huh. Lives because it's it. It lives, the station mm -hmm. at 4 a.m. And the number five, I. I don't like playing football. Yes. Always after the verb like, we are going to use an ing or to play. Okay. Puede okay. ser an ing verb form after like, o puede ser un infinitive. Puede ser un infinitivo también después de like. So, por eso aquí aparece playing, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. I don't like playing soccer. All right. Let's send it. And there we have it. 20 of 20 points. Are we okay with that way? Yeah. All right. Okay. Is there any other question, Emerson, I can help you with? No, no. It's wrong. I don't forget that. It's wrong. Okay. And I have a problem with with the telephone in this. Okay, okay. <laughs> so the uh, homework for tonight is this one, all right? Rarely, usually, never, okay? Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. That will be your your homework. If you want, we can do it together. I don't know, we have to, uh, these 10 minutes, so if you want, we can do it together. 
Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. The time. instructions, choose the adverb of frequency that better describes the activity. Right, okay. that's the instructions. All right. What do you think is the first one? Mm -hmm. Usually. Usually, all right. Mm -hmm. Number two, I have just in five. Once a week. Uh, once a week, have classes on Sundays? Mm, not necessarily. Okay. Uh -huh. Aquí nos falta un adverbio de frecuencia, a frequency adverb. En todo caso, every day es un adverbio de tiempo, ¿verdad? o una time expression. Once a week es una time expression. El adverbio de tiempo que tenemos es never, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Number two. I don't... Bye. Si usted gusta, lo probamos con uno y si no da, vamos a probar con el otro, right? Para okay. que vayamos entendiendo. A ver, ¿cuál quisiera que pusiéramos que le suena más? Usually. Usually. Yeah. Ese le suena más. I don't usually drink coffee. All uh, right. Uh -huh. Bueno, vamos a probarlo. Si quiere lo probamos de una vez, a ver si de una so no nos va a enviar hasta que terminemos no, hasta no. las 5. A veces en otras plataformas sí nos deja, ¿verdad? Ok. Ajá. Yeah. Uh -huh. Number four, birds. Ajá. Uh -huh. Always. Always. All right. Sing in the morning. Uh -huh. Number five. He always sees seven for a all right. She is always early. All right. Let's let's try and let's see. Mm, look, we got the twenty of twenty. Yes, you did it. Yeah. You did it, Emerson. There you go. Mm -hmm. Nice. A ver, la fue haciendo conmigo para que ya de una vez quede hecha. Sí, ya la tengo. Yes. Very yeah, good. Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay, then, Emerson, if you have any other question, I will be happy to assist you with, with it. All right. All right, then I think we're finished, right? <laughs> okay, have a very good night, Emerson. Yes, everyone. Good night. Good night. Have a very good rest, you too. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.